this week on World Business. In the run-up to the Copenhagen Conference on Climate Change, we have the first part of a new series looking at the people studying and facing the realities of global warming. The entire uh, world that we live in will change and uh, that's going to impact all aspects of, uh, uh, of our civilization. And we will also meet the companies working to find a solution, starting with a Chinese firm that is a shining light in the field of solar power. China has made a, a decision at a very high level that clean energy is the future. They're already uh, you know, poised to be uh, the number one maker of solar cells. The Arctic is melting, it is melting much faster than we thought. And what we've seen for the last uh, 60 years is a uh, rapid warming of the uh, Arctic world. And the most spectacular symptom maybe is the uh, regression, the, uh, the decline in the sea ice uh, cover of the Arctic Ocean. There is a central park, pack ice which is permanent, which has been there for millions of years. And we're fearing now that it might disappear over the, uh, the coming century. The scientists are already warning the politicians that it might be a four degree increase. And between four and eight degrees, the entire uh, world that we live in will change. And uh, that's going to impact all aspects of, uh, uh, of our civilization. Uh, not only transportation, but the way we grow food. Uh, profitability will change. Uh, countries that are rich now will become poor and countries that are poor will become rich. It's the uh, geopolitical tension, it's the war, the conflicts uh, that will be generated by uh, this situation that, will, that are uh, of concern uh, for us, but mostly for the, uh, the coming uh, generations. One direct impact of the warming of the Arctic world will be the uh, destabilization of the Greenland inland seas. That's the immense glacier that covers the uh, Greenland. Uh, in some areas it's uh, almost three kilometers thick and most of it is above sea level. So as it melts and as it starts to flow into the Atlantic and Arctic Ocean, the level of the ocean all over the world will, will rise quickly. And that represents a lot of, uh, of, of, of problems. If uh, you raise sea level by two meters, close to 20% of the population of the globe has to move. And uh, this is the big concern of geopoliticians at this time. It's where will these, these people go? And this will bring a lot of conflicts and, uh, and problems. ArcticNet is a network of centers of excellence. One of the main tools that we use is the uh, research icebreaker Amundsen, which uh, can bring uh, up to 40 scientists in the Arctic to study all aspects of the, of the Arctic. The research is telling us that things are changing faster than expected in the Arctic. And uh, most important, we see changes in the migrations and the life cycles of the fauna, of the animals that live there. Climate change will, will occur, will happen. The impact will be major on our society, on our uh, civilization. But if we would start to do things now, very quickly, uh, stop procrastinating and do things, then I think we could avoid the, the worst of it. Hello and welcome. I'm Raya Abirashid, and this is World Business, your weekly insight into the global business trends shaping our lives. A powerful statement by Louis Fortier, scientific director at Arctic Net, one of our witnesses working on the front line of climate change. Over the next three weeks, in the lead up to COP15, the all important United Nations Climate Change Conference in Copenhagen, World Business will not only introduce you to the people who are witnessing the impact of climate change firsthand, but also to the companies that have pledged and implemented carbon cutting initiatives. Our first report begins in China, which has recently overtaken the US as the world's biggest polluter. Welcome to China Solar Valley. Located 300 kilometers south of Beijing in the city of Dezhou, this is China's showpiece for a sustainable future. 
It boasts numerous records, including the world's largest solar-powered building, the world's longest street lit by photovoltaics, and the world's largest manufacturing base for solar thermal. In fact, nearly 70% of the city is powered by the sun. The project is spearheaded by Huang Ming, founder and chairman of Haimin, the world's largest maker of solar water heaters. The eye-catching headquarters of Haimin's Sun Moon Mansion is a gateway to China's Solar Valley. Today, Haimin produces more than double the amount of solar water heaters than the US and Canada combined. And it all started with a dream. This Sun and Moon Mansion indicate my dreams uh, to promote uh, solar energy into all the buildings of the world. Ming used to work for what can now be considered the enemy. A former oil equipment engineer, his epiphany took place when his daughter was born and he realized her future was uncertain in a world relying on finite fossil fuels. So he started moonlighting, building water heaters, eventually giving up his job and starting commercial production in 1995. Today, Haimin is a $300 million company with 60,000 employees. Costing less than $300, the heaters are springing up on rooftops all over China, residential and office buildings, schools and hotels. Traditional fossil fuel energy will be exhausted very soon. So this hotel is using solar water heaters, which saves about 50% energy. It is clean and will help solve the problems of the environment. It will improve the climate greatly. Ming set another milestone, building the first solar-powered five-star hotel, adjacent to the Haimin headquarters. In total, how much less energy will be used by this hotel? 90%. Known in China as the Solar King, Ming's dream is to power China and the world with the inexhaustible energy of the sun. We want to tell the world that the green energy will not only benefit, be benefit to the, the, the environment, benefit to, to our uh, energy uh, supply, but to also benefit to our lifestyle, to our everyday life, benefit to, to the appearance of our buildings, of our town, of our city. And thus, China Solar Valley was born in 2003, a case study for sustainable living. China has made a a decision at a very high level that clean energy is the future. They're already, uh, you know, poised to be uh, the number one maker of solar cells, the number one manufacturer of wind turbines. Uh, they're already the number one makers of solar hot water heaters, and they want to be the leader in, in, in electric cars and batteries. So yeah, the, the game is on, absolutely. And it comes at a critical time. According to a McKinsey study, over the next 20 years, China's cities will add over 350 million people, more than the entire population of the U.S. today, putting pressure on energy, water, land, and the environment. While companies like Haimin solely focus on solar and energy-saving products, increasingly other companies around the world are stepping up to help reduce their carbon footprint as well. Businesses have to position themselves, have to distinguish themselves, I think, in front of their investors as well as their consumers. And this trend has been picking up in the last five, seven years tremendously. There are lots of environmental problems such as the melting of the glaciers. We know that we do not stop this. The Earth will be in a critical situation. It is our generation's mission and task to stop this. A sentiment the corporate world of today has begun to echo.